Our worship begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as your children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. 
Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. So this morning we're on page 446 in the Spark Bible, and we're going to read a story called Serve and Follow. Let's see what this has to say. Look at the pretty garden picture. Look, there's squiggles. Let's see what our story says. Some people wanted to see Jesus. The disciples showed these people where Jesus was teaching. When a seed is planted in the ground, it dies so that a new plant can grow with many more seeds in it, Jesus said. Why was Jesus talking about seeds? He explained, it's time for God's promise to come true. I will die and come to life again. Many people will serve and follow me. The people asked Jesus how they could serve him. Follow me, Jesus said. I will show you how to help and care for others. Just then, a voice as loud as thunder said, It is time for me to keep my promise. Je Jesus told the people it was God speaking. God says, It's time to follow me. After Jesus finished teaching, some people began serving and helping others. 
they were following Jesus. And the little activity at the bottom says, if, if Jesus asked you to follow him by helping others, what kinds of things would you do? So talk about that with your families. What kinds of things would you do as a follower of Jesus? And let's talk about when that following of Jesus starts in our children's message coming right up. So when we talk about Jesus, we talk a lot about following Jesus. And we talk a lot about being like Jesus. And we, we talk in our sermon times and in our Sunday school times and in our Spark Bible times about the types of things that Jesus did, about the people that he loved and cared for and the people that cared for Jesus and walked with Jesus. And, you know, when we talk about all this following, we don't really talk about when that following starts. And you know when it starts? When we're really, really young. And for some people, when they're really, really old. It starts at the waters of baptism. When we go to our baptism and when we come to the waters of baptism, sometimes we bring little babies and sometimes we bring grown-ups. They come to the waters of baptism and they say at that moment, it's, I want to be a follower of Jesus. Now, when you're little, you can't do that. You, you, um, you can't talk yet, so you can't say anything. So what we do is your parents and your, your godparents or your sponsors make that promise for you. And then as you get older, you start taking on that promise yourself. And as you start getting more and more responsible, you start becoming the one who says, I want to be a follower of Jesus. And eventually, when you're like just starting high school, we have a big ceremony called the Affirmation of Baptism. And in the Affirmation of Baptism, you get an opportunity to say, these are now my promises. And I want to be a disciple of of Jesus. I want to be the one who follows Jesus. But just know, no matter what age you are, no matter how little you are, no matter how big you are, you have the opportunity to follow Jesus and do the kinds of things that Jesus has called us to do. Loving one another, serving one another, helping one another, being kind to one another. Those are all things Jesus wants us to do. And when we do that, we're just like Peter and James and John that we hear about in the Bible. We're just like Moses and Abraham and all those really, really old people. We have the opportunity to show the world what Jesus is like. And that's such an exciting thing. And it all starts in the waters of baptism. Amen. Our gospel reading is taken from the 12th chapter of the book of John. Now, among those who had come to worship at the Passover festival were some Greeks. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put forth this request. Please, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and the two together went to tell Jesus. Now Jesus replied, Now the hour has come for the chosen one to be glorified. The truth of the matter is, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. If you love your life, you'll lose it. If you hate your life in this world, you will keep it for eternal life. Anyone who wants to work for me must follow in my footsteps. And wherever I am, my worker will be there too. Anyone who works for me will be honored by Abba God. Now my soul is troubled. What will I say? Abba, save me from this hour? But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Abba, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowds that 
stood nearby, heard this, and they said it was a clap of thunder. And others said it was an angel speaking. Jesus answered, it was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. This is our gospel reading. Now, wait a second. Some Greeks were going up to the Passover? What are Greeks doing at the Passover festival? For the answer to this question, we have to dig a little bit deeper into our Old Testament scriptures and why God called the Jewish people the chosen people. What were they chosen for? In Isaiah, God calls the people of Israel for a purpose and chooses them for a specific mission. Isaiah 42, 6 reads, I, Adonai, have called you to serve the cause of the right. I have taken you by the hand and I watch over you. I have appointed you to be a covenant people, a light to the nations. This is the ultimate chosenness of the Jewish people, to be a light to the nations. The people who knew God were called to be a light to those who did not know God. That was how it worked. But like most things, when you hand the plan over to humans, their sinfulness will indeed get in the way. Over the years, Judaism began to wonder what to do with all these Gentiles, and their struggle began. In the days of Jesus, many believed that it was the role of Judaism to convert Gentiles to Judaism. But then along came Jesus, and along came Paul, who taught that God could love Gentiles as Gentiles. Paul even called that the mystery of the gospel because first century Judaism couldn't fathom such a thing. No matter what the struggles in Judaism were, Gentiles were still being attracted to the faith of Abraham and Sarah. So much so that even they would make trips to Jerusalem for the pilgrim festivals, Passover being one of them. There were three pilgrim festivals in Judaism where you had to make a journey to Jerusalem. And it may have been a while that they were there, uh, maybe it had been a while they were on their way there, or over the years they had heard about this Jesus. Many may have even encountered Jesus in their own villages and wanted to see him again. But as they arrived in Jerusalem, they wanted to know more about this Jesus. And wow, did they get a show! Jesus not only teaches them about what is going to happen over the next couple of days, but he calls on God to be made known to the people. And the echo of God's voice is heard from heaven. Now some, they just think it's thunder, just like they did at Mount Sinai when God spoke. They said it was thunder. Some say it was an angel. Well, it was an angel, was the angel of the Lord speaking about the divinity of Jesus and the identity of Jesus as holy. Do you get what's happening here? Because it's really important for all of you. God is speaking to the Greeks, to Gentiles. This is nothing more than a total affirmation that God so loved the world. That was in our lesson recently and probably one of the most memorized passages of scripture. God's love is extended to all people, whoever they are, wherever they are. And yet this is probably still one of the hardest things for us to understand. All humans are created in the image of God. And yet, we divide ourselves by skin color, ethnic backgrounds, and, well, take your pick. If there is anything we humans like to do, it's that we like to separate ourselves. 
there always seems to have to be an us versus them. Now, I grew up in a very small town in Wisconsin, Marinette, in the northern part of Wisconsin. The first time I even met a black person, I was about seven years old. Charlotte Ridgeway was in town with a choir, and we were her host family. And Charlotte was awesome. I remember her down on the floor playing trucks with me. And she came and stayed with us for a couple of days. My parents had to explain to me that some people didn't like Charlotte because of the color of her skin. I couldn't figure that out. Charlotte was created in the image of God. Charlotte was a child of God. But yet we still strive all these years later to separate ourselves. God's voice in our lesson for today speaks to the contrary. When God talked about glorifying Jesus' name, God was glorifying it to the Jews and to the Greeks. Paul takes this proclamation even further and tells us that in the Messiah, there is no Jew and there is no Greek. All are one in the eyes of God. The only way that we are going to deal with the separation that we create in our world is to see each other at the foot of the cross. When I read this story, that is what I see. At the foot of the cross, I see Jews. I see Greeks. I even see Romans. In that one brief moment, they represent the whole of God's creation created in the image of God, seeing the glory of the name of Jesus. Now, a group of pastors were once asked when Jesus returns, what do you think he's going to say? What's going to be the first thing out of his mouth? Each pastor in turn gave their answer, and it came to the oldest pastor in the group. The whole room turned to him, and he sat quietly in his chair for a moment. And then he finally said, enough. When Jesus returns, he will say, enough. Enough hate, enough division, enough greed, pride, and envy, enough arguing, enough battling, enough! As builders of the kingdom of God, we are called to start the work of enough. Enough. We need to draw the line and see our siblings created in the image of God looking up at the crucified Christ just like we are and hearing the voice of God. Only then do we truly become the church. Amen.
Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promise to write your law on our heart. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit, Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind and body, and those who are dying, and all who grieve. We pray especially for Maggie, Joan, Verna, Kim, Shirley, Arletta, Joe, Don Mark, Dana, John, Rowen, Hildegard, Jane, Grace, Alice, Lana, Sandy, Sagan, George, Cindy, Dick, Pam, Dawn, and those we now name silently in our hearts and in our homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school confirmation and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. For all those who have died in Christ, bring them into life everlasting. We play, pray for Florence Panning and her family at the passing of her brother, Elmer Eggert, we ask that you bless all who mourn and remind them of the promise and the power of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Adonai bless you and keep you. Adonai's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Adonai's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Sovereign, the Savior, and the Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.